Hi, uh, this is Akash back with an another exciting uh, reading on alternative investments. Uh, in the last reading, in the last class, I'd say, uh, uh, sorry, not another reading, another, uh, what do I say, video series on alternative investments. Okay, in the last video, we discussed everything uh, uh, as per the LOS requirement and even extra, okay, for uh, real estate and hedge funds. Okay, right now we'll directly jump into commodities okay uh, as a uh, asset investment uh, alternative investment asset class okay my suspicion is that three out of ten questions okay uh, would come uh, from this topic so to start with uh, exposure to commodities is important firstly buying physical commodities is not recommended because it entails a lot of storage transportation cost and it is excuse me it's really cumbersome Secondly, we can have exposure via derivatives. Thirdly, but the stocks of companies which are a pure commodity play. Fourthly, buy ETFs. Example, the gold ETF in India. Fifthly, investors can go uh, for managed futures, a fund that operates like a hedge fund wherein the limited partners contribute capital and the manager invests in commodities either actively or passively. If the managed futures is in the form of limited liability versus mutual funds, in mutual funds it is accessible to retail investors and has higher liquidity while in case of LLP, limited liability partnership, there is a higher limit on the minimum amount to be invested and also there is a limit on the number of investors. For wealthy investors, there will be a separate fund manager who will manage their funds separately. Given that an investor wants to invest in gold via equities and there are two companies, A and B, both the companies are similar in all aspects but A has other businesses also while B is solely dedicated towards gold, so its correlation with gold will be lower. If the investor wants to take a position in gold, Cetris Paribus, okay, no bias towards the management of the company no prospects and all, we would recommend that the investor invests in equities of company B. The potential risks and return in case of commodities are negative aspects include lower returns as compared to traditional asset classes, high volatility and a very low sharp ratio. The positive aspects include a low correlation with other asset classes, significant diversification benefits and hedge against inflation. The factors affecting price of commodities on the demand side, we have uh, a dependence on the economic and business cycle on the supply side uh, the commodities primarily depend upon production inventory storage cost extraction cost and so on and so forth in the short run supply may be highly inelastic such that if demand shoots shoots up price will rapidly uh, rise and investor gains on this front there is a relationship between the forward and spot price and trust me when i say this this is 99.99% guaranteed to come on the exam okay it is sure short that a question from this topic will come okay so we know that the forward price is known today okay it is a contract to buy or sell a commodity later at a predetermined price so f should be greater or less than s mr a a person is bullish he buys the commodities pays by uh, buys the commodities and pays while there is another investor who enters into a forward, Mr. B, he gains. So, Mr. A, he is bullish and he pays and buys the commodity. While Mr. B enters into a forward, okay. So, forward price will be greater than uh, the spot price. Forward price plus interest saved because of the gain. Forward contract is bad because it provides no convenience yield. The benefit that the commodity can give if it is owned but forward on the commodity cannot give. The forward price is the spot price plus interest plus storage minus convenience yield. If the convenience yield outweighs interest and storage costs, it will be a situation of backwardation. Forward less the spot price. If forward is less than spot price, it is a situation of backwardation. If forward is greater than spot price, it's a situation of contango. This, I, as I said earlier, it is my suspicion that this question will come on the exam. There are two kinds of hedges, okay, the producers of commodity and the consumers of the commodity. 
the producers of the commodity okay they are afraid of oil price falling and thus they sell futures this is known as a short hedge while the consumers are afraid of price rising assume you and me we are afraid of price rising and so we go f plus and this is known as a long hedge what are the sources of return from commodity forwards or futures change in spot price if the spot price changes so does the forward price change and as a result it leads to a gain or loss collateral yield if we take a position in commodity forward or futures we keep margin which can be in the form of collateral security hard core money shares etc daily repricing is done an active fund manager does it so actively that which that which collateral to keep and when to do that we get a refund and a margin call is there roll yield instead of buying long maturity futures we can buy futures at each time interval and sell it the next time interval this is rolling over the nomenclature is so intuitive rolling yield in order to understand roll yield we assume that the above uh, that the above two sources have to be un have understood to be constant we enter into short term futures when maturity comes we roll it over to the next future this means we square off that original future and enter into a new short term future assuming f plus roll yield will be positive in case of backwardation and negative in case of contango the reverse is true for f minus however to understand roll yield better we need to assume ceteris paribus the spot price is constant in case of short position roll yield will be positive in case of backwardation and negative and positive in case of contango feel the activeness in the rollover when exactly to roll over how much to roll over and all these are active decisions that need to be taken by the uh, portfolio manager by the commodity manager in this case compared with purchasing commodity long position in commodity offers the benefit of no storage cost an investor who wants to hedge inflation by allocating a po portion of portfolio to alternative investment should most appropriately invest in real estate and commodities compared to traditional asset classes investment in commodities has exhibited lower returns and higher price volatility the component on the yield on a long only commodity futures position that is independent of whether the contract is in contango or backwardation is the collateral yield commodity index as a passive as an active strategy while indexing as a pa passive strategy an equity fund manager decides to replicate the dow jones industrial average bill in index but constructing a portfolio of 50 stocks in the same weights in which they are present in the dgi dji when share price of these 50 stocks change such that the weight of these 50 stock stocks in dgi changes there is an automatic change in weight of these stocks in the portfolio so has the equity fund manager chosen the stock no does he need to buy and sell the stocks to rebalance no so equity indexing is a passive strategy however commodity indexing a commodity portfolio co constructed uh, through the commodity exchange is an active strategy why because the manager needs to take care of collateral management commodity portfolio consists of commodity derivatives and commodities so rollover comes into play the weight of commodity in the commodity index is based on commodity production or consumption as weight in the index changes there is no automatic change in the commodity portfolio and so the fund manager has to rebalance the portfolio moving on to private equity funds my suspicion is that around 2 to 3 questions okay would turn up on the exam private equity pe funds are organized as llps and managed by a managing partner mp the li limited partners contribute capital and here we primarily talk about wealthy individuals the managing partner invests in a portfolio of companies say c1 c2 c3 and so on depending upon relevant strategies if the company is a startup there is a huge probability of profits and so is the huge probability of losses if the product or the technology under consideration turns out to be a failure this is known as a venture capitalist fund and these are not listed on the stock exchange If the company is a distressed one cannot pay loans interest salaries operating expenses fixed costs but it but there is a turnaround strategy by change in management the managing partner can invest and take part in active management to give direction to the turnaround strategy 
the company belongs to an industry with low business risks and stable cash flow but there are issues with the management and it is visible that a change in management that is a management buyout using debt will lead to higher returns huge returns the manager would do so there are various private equity strategies distressed securities which we discussed above okay developmental capital or minority equity where suppose a company x limited is a small entity and is now planning for major expansion and is ready to divest a minor stake which a private equity fund picks up a leveraged buyout okay here we discuss about management buy in where the existing management buys in and a management buy out where the existing management does so okay so firstly the management uses debt to buy the uh, equity of the company and then converts it to a private limited company if this is done by an outsider then new management buys in it's known as a management buy in and they become the new manager management if it is done by existing management it is known as a management buy out we have a leveraged buy out as well we have venture capitalists okay under venture capitalists okay there are various stages of investment such as angel investing in each, uh, uh, when the idea generates seed capital where venture capital steps in to provide funds for developing and marketing early stage where funds are needed for commercial production and sale you know the later stage where funds are needed for major expansion mezzanine stage where funds are needed for fpo of shares these all strategies are private equity strategies and really really uh, dominant where the managing partner tries to invest money and you know uh, have some positive return out for the limited partners we finally have something known as private equity exit strategies okay so it's not about just investing in the company okay the private equity the ma uh, managing partner wants to not remain uh, invested forever okay he wants to leave the company after investing okay so what are the exit strategies the private equity firms usually hold companies for an average period of 5 years but holding periods can vary from 6 months to 10 years as well for individual companies determination of appropriate exit strategy requires an evaluation of industry dynamics overall economic cycles interest rates and company performance the common exit strategies are the following by an initial public offering this involves taking the uh, taking the private company public a strategic sale okay uh, where we sell our stake to a competitor okay uh, then there is something known as a secondary sale this involves the sale of a company to another private equity firm or group of investors we have something called recapitalization uh, this is a very popular strategy when interest rates are low basically the pe uh, a private equity company uses debt to fund a dividend distribution to the equity holders strictly speaking this is not really an exit but recapitalization is considered to prelude uh, to a later exit we have something known as a liquidation okay we have something uh, in terms of liquidation this occurs if an investment does not perform well the private equity firm liquidates the portfolio company to move on to other products what are the benefits of uh, you know uh, private equity investments okay private equity funds have earned higher returns than equities over the past 20 years based on standard deviation of historical annual returns private equity investments entail higher risk than equity private equity returns have less than perfect positive correlation with returns on traditional investments so there are diversification benefits of including pe investments in investment portfolios however before reading too much into these results it is important to bear in mind that like hedge fund indices pe return indices rely on self reporting therefore they are subject to survivorship and backfill bias both of which lead to overstated returns furthermore in the absence of liquidity event private equity firms may not aim to and mark to market their investment portfolios on a regular basis which leads to understatement of volatility and correlation with other investment classes evidence also suggests that identifying skilled private equity fund managers is very important as differences in returns between the top and bottom quartile life of pe funds are significant further the top quartile funds tend to persistently perform better than others in terms of due diligence and investment considerations following factors need to be taken care of while investing in a pe 
the current and anticipated economic conditions. Portfolio companies have a better chance of doing well if the economy is strong. Since private equity funds take on significant leverage, interest rates and capital availability expectations must also be considered. Then, the quality of the general partner is also important. Important. The limited partners or the investors should examine uh, his experience and knowledge. Okay, the valuation methodology the general partner uses, the alignment of general partners' uh, incentives with the interests of the limited partners, the plan to draw on committed capital. Okay, the planned existing strategies, or entire roadmap, whether or not is prepared by the general partner. So this was a intense discussion on the different, you know, uh, uh, alternative investment asset classes. Now we'll uh, move to our final LOS, uh, which speaks out to describe the risk management strategies of alternative investments. There are a couple of risk management issues. Investments in certain type of alternative investments require long holding periods. As I already said, it's an illiquid one. For example, private equity funds and hedge funds have certain log lock up periods okay hedge funds and private equities are less transparent than other investments as they may consider investment strategies with proprietary information illiquidity is another big issues risk issues for implementation okay large investors can diversify across managers but small investors cannot indices are widely used to track the performance of several types of alternative investments Historical returns on those indices and the standard deviations of their returns may not really be representative of the risk return characteristics. Reported correlations okay, can be different from actual correlations. The hedge fund managers who has incurred large losses tends to liquidate the fund instead of trying to offset losses. Okay, These are issues you know, in terms of implementation for uh, 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 the different asset classes under all 10 alternative investments I, I prefer to call it call it as alt in okay so yeah and finally coming to the risk return measures given the illiquid nature of alternative investments estimates of value okay uh, estimates of value may be used for valuation purposes as a result uh, return data may be smoothened and lagging and standard deviation may be understated this makes the sharp ratio an inappropriate risk return measure for alternative investments Further, the distribution of returns for most alternative investments is non-normal. Returns generally tend to be leptocortic and negatively skewed. As a result, measures of downside risk are more useful. Downside risk uh, measure focuses on the left side of the returns distribution curve. These include value at risk. This estimates the minimum amount of loss expected over a given time period. Safety first or the shortfall first measures. They measure the probability that the value of the portfolio will fall below a minimum acceptable level over a given period. These measures use the standard deviation so they understate, underestimate risk for negatively skewed distribution. The Sortino ratios used for hedge funds is another measure of downside risk. Use, uh, uh, use, uses downside deviation as opposed to standard deviation as a measure of risk. It is important to understand and evaluate tail events that is low probability high severity instance of stresses when it comes to certain types of alternative investments stress testing scenario analysis are common uh, tools that need to be performed to understand uh, potential losses for uh, these investment vehicles thank you